Hi folks, we're back on the uh, ignition system for the Atco standard 22 inch lawnmower. I've got the new coil fitted now. Let's have a look and see how I've got over that one. Well, as you know from the previous bit, uh, video on this, we took the um, coil out and we checked the coil. The coil looked like this this one here, which was Duff. Uh, this is the old original coil by the looks of it, and apparently they are renowned for failure anyway. So uh, I've actually got a replacement coil. It's called the long coil, apparently. I didn't know that, but that's what I, what I actually ordered. But apparently what turned up is a shorter coil. And lucky enough, it only just sort of fits in there. I'll show you in a second. But um, So that cost me £26, I think. Uh, apparently you can get these rewound and can, it can cost over £100 to get that sort of thing done. They don't actually make these coils anymore, so the only option is, is to go for either a pattern coil or get the original one rewound. So I've gone for the cheaper option. I've gone for a pattern one. It has just gone in, as I said to you, it's a lot shorter and I've had to make a little adaption, which I'm going to show you now. Uh, this is the old coil, as you can probably see there. And the way the highest voltage connection made was on this little nodule there that used to sit in sort of that way and that little cable there which your HT lead comes just sort of made a contact on that sort of thing like that the grounding was done through these poles here which basically attach slide into these sleeves there as you can see and your low tension come off of the side there and was crimp lugged onto that little lug there as you can see there so what I've actually done as I say bearing in mind this is shorter this has little inserts there which slide in and out of these iron core bits there so lucky enough i was able to slide them out but one thing you've got to do also is the little nodule there which on this one sits there for that to rub onto isn't really a nodule like that so i've had to get a bit of copper plate like that it's only cheap this stuff and solder onto the little lug that was sticking up there so that we can get a contact if you can see that there of the uh, HT point and that is soldered onto that lug there as well so that's what I've had to do there the only problem is is because this is a lot further out this can actually as you can see rotate there look so that's not really what you want to be doing having that sort of rotation movement there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold that until it sticks like that and I'm going to get some hot glue and just sort of hold these into place so they don't rotate so I'm just going to stick some hot glue in here around there like that and do both sides of that just so that it stays in one place basically I say because it's not the absolute correct coil this is sort of a a backup precaution just in case the um, the thing moves so I'm just gonna let that go off and that's in full contact with that plate now which is just what I wanted there I'm gonna let that go off now and then we'll come back and we'll fit the um, contact breaker point module put the points back in and hopefully we should better bolt this back on right so that's gone off now as you can see now that's nice and solid now that's not rotating it's just an extra precaution uh, to make sure we don't lose connection there or grounding so that's nice and solid I've now got to reassemble the points They've all been cleaned up at the surface there. And that means inserting these insulators in the correct spaces as well. So you've got double insulators here. You've got two big ones. Two small ones which sit through these holes in the centre there. And an insulator that sits under the actual screw head itself. So that totally insulates the screw from um, earthing out on this. So that's what you need to have with this. So they go on first. The insulators go on second. Can be a bit fiddly this. And then then one on the third. And you've then got to get them in there. I suppose I could put on under one of each, it don't really matter. Make life a bit easier, wouldn't it, doing it that way? Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I'll just remove that screw again. Now they're in location. But I think that needs to go underneath the insulator. And then the insulator goes on top. 
That's better. Because the, the cables need to be in contact with this, you see. Right, so that's better. I'm happy with it. This one needs to be exactly the same. So by putting these in the wrong way around, you won't get the points working. So that has to go underneath the insulator. So that it comes into contact with your breaker points assembly bracket, which is there. The insulator washer goes on top. And that insulates the screw then. From that cable. Which in turn means that both of them are now connected. That cable there and the condenser cable are connected to this metal bracket without being bolted down to the earth. Or ground if you want to call it that. There we go. Easy to make a mistake there, folks, as you will see. Right, so. It's a very minute movement for them points. Now, the bloke said he's done everything to get this working, so I'm going to take it for granted. I know I shouldn't do. I'll probably have to end up changing it. But I'm going to take it for granted that he's set the points correctly. So if I remove that arm there, that can come up there, you see. Like that. And I can put that spring back in there. Like that, then pull the points back. It's a bit awkward to show you this, folks, but uh, try my best. That's it, points have gone back in. There you go, like that. Then pull that little bracket back over there, and that's it. That's the spark, hopefully, set. I'll put that case back on, pull that over there. Like that, and that hopefully should be the unit set up. So we've got to assemble this now on the actual mower and do the timing, sort the timing out. So let's go and sort that out. Right, we're out at the uh, lawn mower now. And uh, one thing I want to address first of all is the uh, fuel tank that appears to be not shifted over enough. It might even be on the wrong way as well, around the wrong way around, because if I push that forward, to where it needs to be that tap is going to be hitting that bracket there and i don't think that's going to be right there whereas i think if i spin the actual fuel tank around the tap's going to be over this side in this sort of open area so i'm gonna to have to go around the other side undo them brackets that hold that in right so we've just got these two nuts here to undo and not even tight so it just shows what people do because there's no way i would have put that on there on the cylinder head like that resting on the cylinder head like that Right, there's a couple of little spaces in there as well. Just undo that. I'm hoping that'll lift off in one go. I think it's been put on the wrong way, which means I'm doing a few bigger bolts. There's another nut there. These two, I think, are going to have to come undone there. Down there as well, just to spray that open a little bit. I'll just loosen these off. I'm hoping that's just going to give me enough purchase. To spread that tank open yeah it may do there's a bracket on there I'm not sure what that's for put it there for the moment so maybe yeah of course that ain't gonna come out now because it's hitting the spark plug look <laughs> god what a cowboy all right let's try these yeah, it's not even tight look <laughs> god it's not even tight the spark plug look Unbelievable, isn't it? I don't even know. Well, this ain't probably the right plug. I'm not sure. It's, a, it's never fired in there, look. So that's a Champion D16. If anyone knows if that's the right plug or not. Or at least a replacement plug. So, if I can open that up. Like that. Come on, baby. Ah, there we go, there we go. All right, pull that back. Yep. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So now if I can get this out of here, spin that to the side a bit. Open that up, pull this out, perhaps. 
I will take all this apart, folks, as you well know. But I can't have that there resting on the cylinder head like that, that with fuel there. So I wouldn't have definitely put that back in that way. There we go, like that. Look. That's better. Now, if I turn it around that way, maybe. And maybe that goes in there like that. You see? Then pull that one back over there. <sighs> like that. There we go. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? That looks a bit better and more like it should be. Just put that back in there for the moment. That one can go back in there with that collar. Squeeze that together, that bracket's got to come on now. I don't know what that does yet, that bracket. I'll put it on anyway. Just do that up. Oh, I'm not gonna go mad with that for the moment. That goes like that. That goes like that. All right, we put that bolt through there. A little collar. I've got to be careful, Merlin's floating around here, the blinking dog. And he's prone to picking stuff up. And when he picks stuff up, you have to chase him. Oh, just nip that up. Like that. Now that looks more like how it should be. All right, that's it. So that fuel line is now not sitting over there. It's out the way. I'm happy with that. Right, so here's our ignition module, which goes this way up. So I'm going to need to put that on the back plate and lock that little screw at the back there which locks it onto the shaft at the back and so that doesn't rotate then you see that's solid right so that's that we now want to put our flywheel on and our flywheel has got the cam lobe on there as we well know so we've got to get that on the center there just open the points there i did reset them points by the way folks I wasn't happy with it, so uh, I did reset them. They were 15 foul I set them to. They was well small, so I'm glad I did double, double check that. So let's just wind that on first. Again, we haven't set the uh, timing yet. We're just putting the flywheel on so that we can turn the, uh, make the piston go up and down with the crankshaft, because that's a tapered seat on this shaft. So once it grabs, I'll just drop a, little allen key in the top of the piston there and turn the crankshaft around until it comes to the top position and before it goes down again so it's top dead center which is about there right there so that's top dead center basically when the allen key is right at the very top of its travel i'm then going to loosen this off again without turning the crank because we now want to spin this wheel around until that arrow comes up the top. Now let's just make sure we haven't lost our top dead centre. No, we're still at top dead centre there. And that wants to be at 12 o'clock. There's a line all the way through the casting line of the uh, barrel there, which I'm actually just lining it up with, which I can see. And then holding that in place, do your nut back up onto the tapered seat like that, get me impact gun. So let's do that very tight, because it's only that tapered seat that holds that on. And if I put my Allen key back in there, yep, yeah, that's right there, right there, that's top dead center. And the arrow is pointing directly at 12 o'clock, so hopefully that should be set now. Now everything's locked up. Get that spark plug lead coming up through there. Again, I don't know whether we've got spark or not, but uh, we'll soon find out. If I hold that down to earth, I want to be careful, I don't want to get a bloody shock. And then turn this over. I can't see a spark. We well, can't see a spark, folks. What I'm gonna do, 
just for the moment, because I'm not sure about carburation either, is just put this plug in for the moment, clip it on, and we'll try and spin it over and see if we get anything. I'll squirt some easy start in there just to see if we get it to fire. Right, so got some easy start there, folks. Put some of that in there. Put the plug back in. Again, I'm not looking for it to run, I'm just looking for it to fire to show that we've got um, all what we need to make it run. Right, there's no kill switch on it, is there? Let's have a look. It just looks like it's got throttle control. Let's just see if it fires. No. Bloody, it's got good compression though. So I need to find out whether that plug's duff or not. Stick that in there like that. Alright, that's in there. Just tighten that up. Right, okay, so that's there. That's there. Let's see if we can see any spark. Oh no, we got smoke, we got smoke. We got a bit of smoke there. We got smoke folks. There must be a spark then. If we get smoke out of it, it's trying to fire. Can we remove that air filter there? Is there any choke on there? There is a choke on there. Let's see what the throttle's doing. Right, the throttle's open. I'll take the air filter off. We'll squirt something through the uh, carb. Like that. We'll shut the choke. Try that. Here we go, try again. Try that again. Woo. Well, we've we've had smoke. That's a good sign. Let's try to drop more of that fluid in there. So the chokes open. Now we've got a massive air leak there, it's coming out of there, look. Here we go, try again. <laughs> well, we've had smoke coming out of it. There's definitely something not quite right with that carburetor. I don't think that was done up correctly, folks. Might have been sucking in too much air. That one weren't done up at all. I didn't check that one, you see. So let me just nip that up. Nip that one up again. Right, that's a bit better. The sign that we've got smoke coming out of it is encouraging. We've definitely got smoke coming out of there, which to me means it's trying to fire. And through the exhaust, look. There you go, look. Can you see that smoke? Which would, could mean that this, it's firing at the wrong time. So I may have to revisit the ignition timing. Because if you've got fuel spark compression and it's firing at the right time. <laughs> Yeah, so near but yet so far, folks. Give me a bit of thinking time about this one and uh, I'll look online to see if there's a better way of doing the ignition time. It does say 5.30 seconds before top dead centre, so uh, 
maybe it's firing after the top dead centre. I don't know. So I'll have a look at that and I'll come back to you. Right, okay, folks, I've had another look at this. There is actually a very good spark there now, which we didn't have before. So the reason why we haven't got a uh, running engine could be for one of uh, three reasons. One, that the back plate is not in the correct position for the uh, ignition to fire at the right time, so I've got to check out on that. Two, the um, crankcase could have filled up with fuel as well. I don't know what the previous owner's done. It could have water in there, it could have fuel in there, I don't know. So that would also stop it from running as well. I think it's only two points actually. So what I've got to do now, I'm going to take the plug out, I'm going to get the airline rigged up, I'm going to blow through the crankcase, take the carb off there, blow through there, see if any water and uh, old oil or crap comes out. And then we'll have to check the um, settings of that back plate again to make sure that's in the correct position. But we've got a very good spark, which we never had before. So that's a great thing. So I've got to charge up my battery drill now because um, it's starting to go down. Let's put just a drop more in there for the moment. Shut that down, the choke. So let's give that one more blast. Oh, hello. We had a little fire then. That was promising. Did you hear that little pop? <laughs> so we're very near starting it, folks. I don't want to be running it completely on easy start, or I definitely wouldn't put carb cleaner in here because the engine relies on the oil or the fluid in the oil for the lubrication. So we'll give it one more try, and then we'll. Um, I'll have to rig up a temporary fuel tank for it, and. Uh, Give it a go with proper fuel. Try and get that throttle in a bit more open position. Right, that's a bigger throttle opening now. Let's try that. I don't think the timing is correct but we've got spark now, which is all that matters. We just had it pop then. Here it go again. It went again. <laughs> we had it popping again, folks. I've opened that choke a bit more on the carburetor as well, so it's asking for a bit more. Can you imagine if you was cranking it over by hand trying to do that? That's the beauty of these power tools. Plus my drill's getting a little bit hot now, and as I say, I've got a five amp hour battery, which is only down to one now. Let me charge this up, folks. We'll have a little rethink, and then I'll come back to you. Right, okay, folks, I've had a little look around, and apparently, rather than me blow it out, there's a drain plug on the bottom of the crank here, so um, I'm gonna try and take that out first. To do that, I'm gonna need to get this blade off. Oh. Wrong drill, hold on. <laughs> right, let's get this blade off. It just allows, allows me to see the drain plug a bit better underneath. And I've actually cracked the bolt for the drain plug, let me show you. I don't know whether it's a bit dark in there for you, but that's it down there, look. So let's undo that drain plug on the bottom of the crankcase. See if anything comes out. Well, there is stuff coming out. There's actually water in there. So, it looks like it's blocked up and all. So I think I'm gonna to need to get that well blown out. I don't know how much water's in there, whatever. Let me try and stick a screwdriver in there. I've got a Allen key. There's definitely water in there. I'm wondering if turning that over now will blow that out of there, whatever's in there. There's loads of oil in there. Look at that, look, that should be uh, pretty dry in there, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna turn it over and see what happens. I don't know whether you're gonna be able to see anything in there or not, but uh, we'll give it a go. <laughs> I'll take that decompression valve off. Is that blowing anything out? Let's have a little look. Not sure, but right, let's just show you what spark we've got here now. Let's show you that we couldn't see it before because it was too dark. There you go, can you see that? 
we've got a lovely spark there. So we know that we're definitely sparking well now. Well, folks, not only is the light beating us, but this thing's beating us as well because I couldn't really take it for granted what the, uh, the previous owner said, that he tried everything to get it started. Obviously, there was water and oil in the bottom of the crankcases, and although that's come out, I did feel it, and it's got sort of gritty texture to it. So um, I don't think that we've got enough compression. We've got 50 PSI compression, which indicates to me that, that maybe the, uh, the, the thing might be leaking somewhere. Uh, it could be a head gasket, a base gasket or whatever. I don't think this thing's got crank seals as such. I think it's done via brass bushes or whatever. But um, So rather than me pursue with this, I think now, or at least we've got a spark now. That's the main thing. So I'm going to have to take this engine out on another day, obviously, and strip it down, find out what's in the bottom of them crankcases because uh, 50 PSI to me, I don't think it's enough for it to substantially run. So um, yeah, it's not a foul. It's just that you can't really take for granted what someone else said. I took it for granted that he said that he's tried everything to get it going and it doesn't look like this has ever run in his ownership and probably not even the person before that. So there are things, it looks like it's been partially just dismantled because that red fan on the other side, which I took off, when I took that off initially, it was uh, loose anyway. So it looks like someone might have had the uh, inkling to do some work on it, but couldn't be bothered to take the engine out and uh, actually go through it to find out if it's all okay. So anyway, it will need a total strip down. The engine can come out easily and I can work on the engine and probably sort that out, split the crankcase to see what's actually inside there. See if the piston rings are free and whatever, but 50 PSI, just over 50 PSI, I don't think it's good enough to get this thing running. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it here for now, folks. The time's light's beating me as well as the time. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully we can uh, get the engine out of this and maybe take this one step further. I'm not gonna be restoring this yet. This is for a future video somewhere down the line. So that's the little Villiers engine, which we've found little problems with, but we have solved the problem with the spark and it's now got a decent spark. Thanks very much, folks. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.